What's going on, y'all? I am Rain Coleman, an indie author and love story architect. <laughs> I write stories about Black folks and love and drama and everything in between. And today, in honor of Love Day, Valentine's Day, I'm going to shoot my shot <laughs> at a fan cast of a fan favorite love story, Love Jones. Okay, y'all, so in honor of the Valentines of it all, I'm going to revisit the movie Love Jones. Now, this movie is a staple, was a staple in my household growing up. This was definitely a in the pantheon of fl films, films <laughs> that you had to have watched. Um, those of you who've seen it, you know, co-sign in the comments and let me know. <laughs> but this is definitely a movie that must be watched. Now, I did post a video some time ago, sometime last year or the year before. And in that video, I did a really quick fan cast of three of the main characters or three of the characters rather from Love Jones, um, Darius, Nina and Hollywood. Now, that video was just based off of me uh kind of diving into and and sinking my teeth into the romance love story writing um and you know that's how i came up with it i had a little method behind my madness and everything but since then i've kind of sat with that video and i'm like eh, why don't i take this a little bit further so with me closing in on my own publishing love story of sorts this year i do want to explore this movie and kind of finish out that fan casting now the movie itself 1997 romantic comedy this was directed by theodore witcher this movie and if i'm not mistaken i think this was one of two movies that he had done let me know. Let me know. If you know, let me know. <laughs> Correct me. So uh, let's go over the synopsis. Now, in this film, two urban African-Americans. <laughs> what? Darius, played by Lorenz Tate, an aspiring writer, and Nina, played by Nia Long, an aspiring photographer, share an instant connection after a chance meeting at a Chicago club. The two bond over music, photography, and poetry, and eventually begin a torrid romance. However, when Nina decides to move back to New York and mend her relationship with her ex fiance Marvin, played by Khalil Kane, excuse me, Khalil Kane, it leaves Darius heartbroken and the couple's future in jeopardy. So, what I like about this movie is it's so dark and moody. Um, I've mentioned before that I actually do like the Twilight franchise, but not for the reasons you would think. Like, of course, the paranormal, vampire, werewolf of it all, sure. But like the movies themselves really lend themselves to my lifestyle. I like it dark, as you can tell. I like it moody. I like it ominous. I like it intimate. And those movies are very quiet. Those movies have a... However you feel about the color grading in that movie, there's no denying that it is very moody, very misty, foggy, and that I like that. And this movie feels like that, but done well. So let's let's discuss my history with this movie. So 1997, it doesn't. It feels like this movie may have came out earlier, which I know it didn't, but it feels like it was earlier in that decade. And this was one of those movies that was definitely a must see, definitely necessary. And when you talk about the 90s and representation in media for black people, this movie came along like right in the thick of that. So you go from the 90s of, of that like renaissance of like tons of black properties and you move into the early 2000s where it was still kind of going and then things started to switch at a certain point. Now, I don't want to say, oh, this is the best that ever do. It ain't no movies like that out here because I will admit that a lot of the allure of this movie for me is the nostalgia, but it is truly a good movie um it's not without its faults much like anything it's art it's subjective some may like it some may hate it but i think all in all this tells a really good solid story and that is something that drew me to this movie 
yes the actors are beautiful yes i'm from the midwest so this being said in chicago just i just i ate that up um if you were a midwesterner you were you were eating you were living you were being fed back in the day uh martin was in detroit sister sister was in detroit a lot of them were just in the midwestern area places where i would be where old family would be where that were very familiar to me so we were eating and i will say that love jones is a very beautiful movie and honestly it feels very and i'm gonna say it feels very it is very dark academia for so for those of you who are um into the uh dark academia genre aesthetic uh turned well aesthetic turn genre i'll say this fits and checks off those boxes you have those artistic folks that are obsessed with said art you have those people who are um beautiful young people in love you got the the drama the angst the um i think that what makes this a little different is that these are full-grown adults these are not um high school boarding school students and even then it's still that's not a prerequisite but the educational and the art and the obsession part is like really what what i think drives it home but i don't know i love jones is um something that has really impacted me and my storytelling and my writing um so speaking of having having this movie and others like it or others in that same vein of like turning on the tv going to the theaters popping in a dvd or vhs rather and seeing black folks in love seeing black folks arguing seeing black folks having their own emotional issues their own relationship issues that is the thing that got me and it was so freaking normal on top of of course seeing people in my day-to-day -day life but when i made a video about this as well this was Ooh, probably last year as well really quick video um discussing how a lot of those 90s movies and tv shows and like events really shaped my writing in a way that duh makes sense because i am a kid of that era but also kind of comes out in ways or it comes out at times that surprise me or just remind me yes this is what you do so there's one scene in particular in a work in progress in the story about the three siblings um that i kind of put on a back burner for now while i focus on getting the um first series out but i was writing and i remember and this is still my favorite scene out of that book at the time of this recording i ended up writing a confrontation between two people who had a colorful history with one another and this was going on during a party and they were like secluded in this space and bumping heads with like personalities clashing and secrets coming out or whatever and the and like with every keystroke i'm seeing the imagery of specifically love jones but a lot of black 90s love stories that i've consumed and um it, it, it's come out in other ways as well but i remember writing that loving that scene and just kind of immersing myself in that mood like i am here i am with this a lot of the mannerisms a lot of the movements a lot of the dialogue a lot of the aesthetic for my contemporary writing does come from those places where again it makes complete sense I grew up at that time, but I think a little bit further than that is me doing this, doing my writing, experiencing these movies, TVs and what TV shows or whatever, and then the absence of them. So how can I put this? So if you grow up riding horses and all of a sudden you hit 13, you in high school and now you focus on school and going to college and you don't ride horses like you used to and then you start to ride horses again it's just like riding a horse just like riding a bike you'll probably fumble a little bit but that spirit of like riding horse is something that you enjoyed from before it's never going to leave you but if you're not surrounded around that you kind of step away from it or and or you hold on very dearly very tight to those experiences you had when you used to ride horses back in the day i know that was a silly 
<laughs> example, but first thing that came to mind. But that being said, when that shift, that WBCW, UPN switch happened where you weren't getting the degree of black network shows that you were before and the shows you were getting some of the complexion started to change and you could see how different networks were going in their own direction doing something a little bit different than what had been established um and it made me again hold on even more tightly to those uh, movies and shows and experiences that i have from the 90s i.e love jones and so when i look at a lot of my works in progress and i look at my books and i see look at you look at what you're doing look at what's on this paper look at these 400 pages you wrote look at these x amount of words you wrote i can clearly see even if others can't i can see those references those influences those um i can see scenes playing out in my head even if it's not specifically love jones but it's a character that i'm writing now i'm it's like the the way that this movie unfolded is helping me to paint that picture even more clearly for my own work and i absolutely love that and i can attribute that to just consuming a lot of black love media and love jones ah love jones is definitely at the top of the list um jason's lyric that's a good phenomenal one um and i say phenomenal <laughs> of course it's all subjective but when you think of black love movies i think a lot of times you'll get folks and it may be folks of a certain age but you'll get folks who will reference those 90s films um and that's not to say we don't have them now but this this was a key a key one for me so yeah um, any questions about my book and my process and what's going on with me and how i got to this point and what other influences i may have or even just the love jones of it of it all <laughs> please feel free to um to hit me up and uh we can we can talk about it so that being said my my question after all that to myself and to you or to you through myself <laughs> is love jones a must see i have to say yes i have to say if you are someone who reads a lot of romance novels if you're someone who loves um even if you don't to be quite honest i think that in any industry or any field or any leg of like entertainment or any niche space that you occupy, I think it is smart to consume things that may not even be um, in your view path community. So even if you're someone who loves like fantasy, uh, epic fantasy, fantasy, fantasy stories, I would say give it a watch simply because you never know what idea may be sparked from something that's so different from yours and of course you may find that fantasy epic fantasy and this uh, black love story from the 90s have a lot in common um so i think that even if you're not a romance guyly girly non-binary <laughs> you would still benefit from watching this movie um yeah, because I'd love to hear some thoughts. Let's let's pivot. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's get to the cast. So let me go ahead and pull up my handy dandy Googles. So we're gonna go through the cast, and we have um, Darius Lovehall, played by Lawrence Tate. We have Nina Mosley, played by Nia Long. We have Hollywood, played by Bill Bellamy. We have Sheila Downs, which is Darius' homegirl. Played by Bernadette Clark. We have Josie Nichols. Played by Lisa Nicole Carlson. My God. Uh, Marvin Cox. Played by Khalil Kane. Savion Garrison. Played by Isaiah Washington. Troy. His wife. Troy Garrison. Played by um, and at Sarah Duncan. I think her name is pronounced Sarah. Forgive me if it's not. Then we have Eddie Coles. Eddie Coles. Played by Leonard Roberts. So let's go ahead and dive into it so for my fan cast i have darius played by john david washington i have nina played by danielle brooks and i have hollywood played by <laughs> the incomparable aldous hodge and i was very specific and very particular when i came to those characters um looking at lorenz tate looking at nia long and looking at bill bellamy just physically the way they occupy space together 
it was important to me with this fan casting to like kind of embody that or mimic that but of course with like a refreshed way like i don't want someone who looks exactly like those characters but the thing that i zeroed in on was really the height and aldous hodge or aldous hodge is towers over uh john david washington but john david washington for me i feel like could be very charismatic he could feel those darius love hall shoes and i think danielle brooks uh chef's kiss everything that she is in i enjoy i would watch her read an encyclopedia and sing the alphabet i love that woman and also she is a big girl and i'm like what where's the love story for this big girl get her in there get her out in front and let's see what's going on but i i truly um when i did those first three castings the height was really like the main thing for me now with john david washington i know we may have been kind of split down the middle when it comes to the reception of malcolm and marie but the acting him and zendaya playing off of each other in that movie and having those high energy moments and those low moments in their banter and finding out that it wasn't entirely scripted which i don't think any well whatever that's a story for another day but i um i enjoyed i enjoyed it i actually did a um a movie review i believe with my homegirl april where we discussed um malcolm and marie and if if I can remember, I'll definitely add that to the show notes. But yeah, I thought John did a great job. And I think that much like my comment earlier about you being like a, a epic fantasy enjoyer reader and consuming romance to see if there's maybe similarities or what differences i think it's the same thing when i think about um actors and actresses and even singers um John for the roles that i've seen him in outside of malcolm and marie has not played this type of character and even malcolm and marie malcolm was a different person from darius love hall but i would like to see his interpretation of darius i would like to see what he could put into that character and then just the optics themselves in malcolm and marie not that it's dire but he it was fully closed the whole time. I'm not asking for, I want to be clear. I'm not asking for these people to be butt naked, but I think that some of Darius Lorenz Tate's more signature uh, or some of his signature moments, uh, images from that movie was like the, the morning after where he's cooking eggs for Nina and he's shirtless in his jeans. And I would like to see what does that scene or a scene remixed look like with him in it. Um, and then him and Danielle playing off each other. She is a phenomenal actress. I first met her on Orange is the New Black. And she killed it. Danielle, phenomenal. Um, everything I've seen her in, I've enjoyed her. She's very charismatic, um, in my opinion. She, seeing her on screen makes me feel like, oh, that could be my homegirl. Oh, that could be, you know, uh, so-and-so from down the street. Like, she feels very down-to-earth, very cool. And I would love to meet her. This is me actually talking about me in real life. I would love to meet her. <laughs> but that being said, um, I think that her, for the same reasons I have for John David and Darius, I would love to see her bring Nina to life. What does that look like? Because her acting is top notch. Um, at the time of this recording, the color purple, the um, Broadway adaptation, movie adaptation, is already been out for about a month or so. She killed it in that voice, insane acting, phenomenal. I would like to see her play that Nina role. What would Danielle bring to that character? Um, and and what what does that look like? What does Nina and Darius look like as John David and Danielle in 2024, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10? Like, what does that look like? Um, I don't know. I just, I like that pairing. And then, of course, Aldous Hodge, that was purely selfish. I want to see this man on screen. <laughs> I've been watching him for years. I've been watching him, watching TV, and I know you want it. 
but it depends on how you kick your game <laughs> no Aldis is a phenomenal actor i um i want to say i first i want to say that i first met him or met um became aware of him um during leverage leverage is a heist tv show that i absolutely love and it's one of my favorites and he killed it but i also remember seeing him in black and sexy tv um, an indie um tv channel web-based in um internet tv channel telling black stories and it was during an interview not an interview like a almost like a commercial spot with him and the creators but i can't recall if that was before or after leverage and i may have been around the same time that being neither here nor there that is a handsome man he is not in enough things and he would absolutely kill it as hollywood and i think that the hollywood character if you watch leverage he's kind of the he's the science tech guy he's kind of the i don't want to say goofy because that's not it he's very smart he is but a bit more i'll say awkward i think i don't think that's the best word but right now that's the best word that comes to mind so seeing him play this suave smooth asshole that is hollywood bruh come on i think he would kill it um and the way he got his 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 body right because you know these comic book movies they don't play the way he got himself right um for that dc movie yeah he he's killing it so moving on now sheila down sheila is the homegirl in the group with hollywood and with darius she's the home girl this this very neo soul eclectic movie she is the home girl at the record store uh spinning records <laughs> a little miss there she go um bernadette clark i think did a phenomenal job and this may be a little on the nose but i would love to see amber riley amber riley played that part Amber Riley, we know her from Glee. We know she is a great actress. We know she can sing, but I would just like to see her in this movie. Like, this is my fan cast. I want to see her. I want to give Bernadette, oh, Bernadette Lord, I want to give Sheila a slightly larger role because uh, I want to see more. <laughs> and to be honest, let me, let me stop here, put a pin in it. If I were to be in control of a Love Jones fan cast, recast, reboot, it's definitely going to be a series. Yes. We have tons of series. Yes, a lot of reboots and remakes. I don't care. I want this to be a series so we could spend more time with these wonderful people. But yes, Amber Riley would be at the top of my list. Especially working at a record store. I want to hear her sing. Give me an episode where she is just blowing. She is knocking these folks' socks off. But I think she has the range. I think she would um, definitely do something well with this character um next up we have josie nichols yes miss josie she is the best friend to nina she knows about nina's relationships ups and downs she's the home girl they're together that night when um nina meets darius at the um at the bar club in chicago she <sighs> lisa nicole carson mm, again chef's kiss but i would love for none other than the beautiful and amazing Amaya Scott to play this character. Again, if we're going to get a series, we're going to flesh out the, the homegirls-ness of it all. I think Danielle and Amaya would, they would kill it. They would kill it. Um, what, what has been said about podcasting <laughs> for quite some time is like, there's this meme of this little boy sitting cross-legged on the floor next to this like it's not a billboard it's almost like a poster i think of these three women like smiling and laughing and it it says this is what it feels like to listen to a podcast because when you listen to something for so long week after week month after month you kind of get not kind of sort of parasocial relationship but you get kind of close with hearing this person and their voice and their thoughts and opinions and you may meet their podcaster one day and be like oh i feel like i know you that's my long roundabout way of saying seeing Amaya and seeing Danielle independently in their own projects and my love for the both of them. I, I just feel like they would hit it off. I feel like there would be fast homegirls and they would be able to exude on screen this 
we homegirls, we cool, we having a good time to the point where you would want to be their friend as well. Like, I want to be in that friend group. Let's make that duo a trio or a quad triple whatever. Let them be my homegirls. That's what I feel like with them too. And they're both two very beautiful women. 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 <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a fan, of course. I would love to see them do more because i think when it comes to the movie love jones <sighs> josie and nina they convince us that they are friends like the movie is you know pretty quick but i don't like that they didn't have more scenes together they had enough to like give you a feeling that they've been homegirls for some time um they had enough independently like when Josie was speaking with Darius but even that was like over the phone but whatever I think that they had enough in that movie to be like okay they're cool we know that they know each other but I would love to see more more of them just kicking it hanging out and uh then you get your representation Amaya is a uh, trans actress and so you know throw that in there as well um marvin cox khalil kane mr darnell from girlfriends himself um aaron pierre aaron pierre i'm going to be quite honest with you that's just an attractive man that's simply it simply put now he's a pretty good actor he is he's a good actor but i think that I, not that i was trying to do a, like a one-for-one -one casting but i think with Khalil and Aaron, I think on paper they're similar looking. Like if you were to write down what they look like, it would be pretty similar. But also, again, I just want to see Danielle with some fine men. Like how how is that so wrong? I want beautiful people on screen and I want to see them two together. Um, I, I would like to, like I said, this being a series, not a movie, see their relationship played out a little bit more. We get that montage at the start of the movie that clues us into what's going on and then Nina leaves New York and comes to Chicago and the movie happens and they do reconnect again in the movie and that's good cool what happens and that's one of the kind of issues that comes up with Darius and Nina's relationship but I want to see that more too I want to see more of that I want to see more black love the same feelings I got as a kid watching this movie and movies like it I want to put that onto the next generation <laughs> <laughs> or whoever else is watching um this this fan production that i'm building in my mind but yeah aaron is a good looking guy and again i want danielle with some fine men there you go uh moving on to let's do savion savion garrison played by isaiah washington in this version i and i know this man is in everything <laughs> But Coleman Domingo, I feel like, would kill it. He is a distinguished older gentleman. He's an attractive guy. He um, has shown his acting chops in everything that he's been in. When I saw him in Euphoria, then I saw him in uh, The Color Purple, and then I've seen him in some other stuff. But specifically, Euphoria kind of took me by surprise, not because I didn't think he was a good actor, but I cannot pinpoint when I first saw him. When I saw him in Euphoria season one, I felt as if I had seen him in something prior, but I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if he's just looks like a man I knew <laughs> or if he just like has been in something and I'm just not thinking about it. Um, but yeah, I, I think he, him and Isaiah, I think he, what Isaiah brought to that role being a suave, smooth, older gentleman who was a little bit of a dog. I think Coleman would be able to get that across as well. Um, whatever, y'all forgive me because I don't keep up with award shows. Whatever award show he was at most recently, sometime in January, he wore this gold number. That was like, brother, are you kidding me? This looks freaking good so <laughs> that being said i uh i think he i think he would kill it i think he would kill it and um we're gonna move on to troy garrison who is savion's wife um played by uh Cheryl duncan I, and again i hope i'm saying that her name right i want carrie washington so coleman and carrie 
I just want to see them paired together. Them two folks is fine. Um, but in the movie, they go through some kind of marital issues. And again, we're dealing with a movie, so you don't get a whole lot of time to kind of flesh that out. Uh, but we do see, and oh, that's something else I love about this movie. We, we get a little bit of it, but then we also get a lot of it but specifically from Savion's point of view he brings another woman to the game night with the friends they you know, call him a dog and whatever else and he's like oh no we just friends such and such and i would like to see that storyline explored maybe a little bit more and carrie we know she got the chops we know she got the lip quiver we know she got the attitude we know that she can sell it so i would like to see those two together and and you know explore that storyline a little bit deeper a little bit further and also they have kids so it's like it's not just some folks who's married young beautiful folks married acting a fool no y'all grown y'all got kids and you acting up so um and then lastly we have eddie coles played by leonard roberts now i don't care what you say even in this movie the 1997 version that character is queer that is a gay man now leonard i don't know nothing about that man's sexuality i'm not factoring him in in this conversation but the portrayal of eddie that man was gay i like I, there's no way and if you're a queer person who have seen that movie even if you ain't and you agree let me know because i know in my heart of hearts that was a gay man <laughs> that um so that being said uh, and not specifically the reason um the casting for him is titus titus burgess now I know I just did my little mini rant and I don't want you to think I wanted uh, Titus to be him simply because Titus is queer. That aside, Titus has pipes. He can blow as far as comedy. He's a wonderful comedy actor. Um, Eddie's role in this is that fun friend. He um, he, he didn't, he, didn't get, he, he was not as, I don't say deep. He was not as um serious i'll say as the other folks and their roles in this movie i would like to see titus with this character but i would also again in my fan cast as being a series not a movie i would like to see titus the actor get that more um seriousness not to say the eddie character has to be solemn and angry and sad and upset but i would like to see him play just straight out somebody who's dealing with different emotions uh, and again not to say that titus hasn't done that before but like when i think of him i cannot not think of kimmy schmidt <laughs> so that's where my mind goes but i would like to see him doing eddie but in a more serious way and uh because i know he has the acting chops for it but i would also like that fun happy silly titus that we all have come to love so all in all i think um i think that that would be a solid cast titus would definitely kill it let me know so have you seen love jones um if not give it a watch give it a watch and let me know come back and let me know what are your thoughts uh so but how what did you think about my casting did you agree with it would you change anyone if so who who would you like to swap out or even if it's the whole cast i don't mind let me know that put it in the comments reach me on social media all the links will be in the show notes. I would love to take this conversation a little bit further than we are now. And until next time, I am Rain Coleman, a love story architect, <laughs> indie author, indie writer, trying to get this old book thing going. And uh, I wish you a happy Valentine's Day to you and the one you love, Darla. <laughs> All right, y'all. Miss that smile. Lord knows I ain't seen that in a while, but it's your style. So something must be up keeping you down. You a queen that must be heaven sent. Pray my soul, I must repent for not telling you what I meant and how I felt. Honestly, I'm used to throwing wishes in a well. My conscience tells me that I could have helped without fail. Actions speak louder than words.